when we got into this here as a church, um, the thing God gave us has to do with the eagle, soaring as the eagle. And what, what that represents is speed. Somebody say speed. Say it louder, speed. That God will be giving us speed. And we've taken some stock of that speed the first half of the year. But I, I believe that the best part of that speed is in the second half of this year. And I'm prophesying to everyone that cares to receive that whatever stagnation you might have you know, encountered before now, this anointing and covenant of speed will reach you and break your own records in the name of Jesus Christ. You will scale new heights in the name of Jesus Christ. Speed is real. In a natural estate, we understand speed. If you want to walk from point A to point B, there's a level of distance you cover, level of stress. When you have to walk, and then it changes if you can run. You cover more distance, or you save more time. And then if you can, some distance, you take a public transport, for instance, especially in our climb. When you take public transport, there can be delays, uh, airport delays, flight delays. Uh, but when you have your own private vehicle, you, got, you just get into your vehicle and just zoom off and you, you gain speed. And then there's another one that you just fly, isn't it? You just fly. Like from here to Abuja is how many hours? By flight. Eh? 45 minutes or one hour max. But if you're going to trek from here to Abuja, how long will it take? It will take your life. In quote, like when I say life, it doesn't mean you will die, but you will not be the same again. So it's more than just the time, the stress. But that's how life is. You can be trekking, which is God's provision. You can be running with your leg. It's still God's provision. But the same God can provide monies for public transport, isn't it? And then the same God provides resources for your own private vehicle. And then the same God can provide monies for a flight. And even that flight, there is public one and there is the private one, isn't it? The private one is faster. And the same God provides it. You can buy your own. Say, so I will buy my own. What you don't desire, you don't deserve. If you think you can be using public forever, but don't castigate those who are flying. I want to encourage you to trust God for a flight. The second half of the year, a flight. He said, we saw upon the, you know, when you look at the plane itself, it looks like an eagle. And then when the eagle takes off, he pulls off his, the talons, you know. That's like the plane moving the tires in. It's the same thing. If some of the things that John the beloved saw in Revelation, it was planes, it was seen, fighter jets, but the only way you could describe it is I saw a mighty eagle moving at the speed and the fire was coming out of his body. Is the engine of the plane. That's the truth. That's, what it, that's the only way you could describe If you are there too, you would say it's a big, I saw a very big eagle and the fire was coming from his body. I was moving fast. He said, jet. And one of the reasons God gives people speed is to restore them. In Joel chapter 2 verse 25, he says, um, I will restore to you the years. For some people, maybe your first half was even like full of losses. You missed out on opportunities. He says, so I will restore to you the years that they, you know, the years. Sometimes the months, sometimes the seasons. So when God's mercy which is available in this conference, rest on his people because he's the father of mercies. We have restoration mercy, we have financial mercy, we have healing mercy. God is the father of mercies. So when that mercy comes on people, you know, he now gives them speed to cover up for the lost time, for the lost monies, for the lost opportunities, just in an instant. For somebody here, maybe your dad, you know, the, some things they stole from him or took from him that belongs to the family. Uh, this second half, it will be restored in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I can't hear you louder. Amen. In fact, anything that was taken from you in the last seven years, I'm prophesying restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Angels of God will go forth and, and command a conversion into your own bosom in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, I will share my testimony. Oh, yes. He restores. It was taken from the store. He now puts it back into the store. Only that when he's doing it, he adds jara. He, his restoration with compensation. He said, for your shame, you shall have double honor to, to cover up for that time of embarrassment and pain. And by the way, when those things begin to happen, learn to receive them. Don't throw them away. God will restore to you the years, the seasons, the opportunities, and the blessings that you might have missed in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you want to call it covenant of speed. And sometimes God just, you know, gives, he would just give people speed just to show his hand. His hand that I'm not a man. I'm not on the human level. I, 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 do, I can't trek. I'm a spirit. I move. I, I pray that God will show his power in your life this second half. But we will all see speed in Jesus' name. One of the keys to speed is purity of motive. James chapter 4 verse 3. Most times people ask for, oh Lord, do something quick in my life. But behind the quest is a dark motive. Sometimes just to show off. You know, as a pastor, you can be praying that God should make your ministry grow. Not because you want to talk lives, but to show your friend in the city that you too can do. And nobody sees the motive. Only God sees that. He said, you ask and you do not receive because you ask what? I mean, that you may spend it on your pleasure. If you can have that in NIV, it will be fantastic. NIV or TPT, any of them. You know, TPT or NIV. So why, why are you asking for speed? I won't speak because I told him many years ago, I like you to do things in my life in such a way that it will be easy for me to give you all the glory. I've been telling him that since my final year days in school. I don't want it to happen in such a way that my sweat, my energy will be looking like it's my effort. Look at this great dome now. I can't take glory for it. It's bigger than anything anybody can think at that time. So I said, Lord, do, do it in such a way that it will be evident, even me, it will be easy to give you the glory. So I love God doing big things. That can be your own motive, which is fine. Or you see something in scriptures that really belongs to you and you know it's yours and then you are claiming it, but not for show off, not for fleshy or carnal reasons. Is the reason why some people's prayers have been delayed. God is working on their motive. Motive means reason for. Why is she asking for marital restoration? Why is he asking for plenty of money? Why is she doing this? Why is, you know, God sees the real, it could be out of bitterness. It could be out of unholy competition. But the moment you align properly, heavens will open. I'm praying that during this conference, as we begin to look at the last part of this conference, that any motive that's not been helping you, the word of God will correct it in the name of Jesus Christ. I've seen God do that to people, even in scriptures. He will break you, break you, break you. Where you are, you know, Moses was bugai. Sorry. You know, when God called Moses, he was bang. <laughs> he was forward. He was, you know, jumping ahead of his time. You know, he was trying to fulfill the call by himself. He, he was fighting by power, by might. You know, ah, they didn't ask him. He, he was trying to rescue the Jews. You know, ah, God called me to rescue them, to deliver them. He was doing it with, in the flesh. Ah, God said, this one needs to be broken properly. By the time God finished with him, when God called him, he refused the call. Go and check it. That's when, oh, the motive is now clear. He was now remembering that he was a stammerer. Go and check it. The same thing for Joseph. Joseph, I'll be telling his brother, I had a dream. You guys were bowing to me in dinner. Telling the brothers, your own elder brothers, even if you had a dream like that, shouldn't you be praying in the spirit? He was telling them, ah, guys, I, I, I had a dream. Ah, what is that dream? All of you, all of you, all of, all of you, including brother. You know? And what happened to us? Believe me, you were all bowing down and I was still standing and I was just did like this. <laughs> ah, they left him. Then after maybe three weeks, 
then on that dinner, and then he stood up and said, guys, I had another dream. Uh-huh. He said, is, it, is it the same dream? It's the same, but God now, fishy. God now, added Jara to it. What happened? Even daddy and mommy, they were just doing like this to me. God said, ah, he needs prison 101. When God finished with him, <laughs> when he saw the brothers, you meant it for evil. But God used it for transport money. <laughs> he was broken, bitterness drained, all those pride, coat of many colors. He was ready. So God wants to work on our motive. Many of us in our client want to prosper, drive a car, get a good job. It's, it's okay. But you need to check. Is, is it to prove to the second wife of your dad that you can survive? Or to show your friend? Or just for flimsy reasons? Why do you want to be healed? Is it because it's God's provision? Or just to be spending that energy to go into the club in the night? You know you can obtain healing and disappear from church. You can be prosperous now and they don't see you in the workers anymore. Why do you want to prosper? He said, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with what? NIV, what? Wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. It, it, it stops the flow of answered prayers. So why do you want speed? I want speed to cover up for the lost time. Oh, I've lost some time, lost some opportunities. I want it to be covered up on time. Let the hand of God come upon me. Your motive must align. And it's something that you can resolve just in a moment. With understanding, you let go of the bitterness. You let go of the unforgiveness and align yourself. In fact, when that alignment takes place in your heart, before you even ask, the answer will drop on your laps. God is much more than us trying to show off. Another way we experience God's speed is persistent prayers. Look at him. Persistent prayers. If you really desire it, then you will stay on it with God. Even when it looks like it is not happening and you know it is promised in his word, you stay on it. I've had such in my history. Things I saw that this is my lot. And I stayed on it. I prayed for wisdom for one and a half years before this church started. I knew I needed wisdom. I was a young pastor, maybe in my early 20s. And God called me to start a church in Lagos. How do I do it? Will people show up? Ah, so, Lord, your wisdom. Two things, wisdom and favor. Every day. Oh, let it rest on me. If there was a particular verse and God gave Solomon wisdom. I said, Lord, give ye me wisdom. Just carry the verse like that. If you can give it to Solomon, then you, must, you can give it to me. I kept praying. I'm sure any time they open the portal of heaven and they see my name that time, they say, this man has come. It's wisdom and favor. And then our ministry started. And then God's wisdom began to work. And the people say, ah, he's a wise man. But you persist in prayers. What, 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 what do you desire? Let, let's look at Luke 18 from verse 1. And you see where persistence, uh, persistent, persistence in this context. Then he spoke a parable to them that men ought always to pray and not what? To lose heart. Verse 2. Saying there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Verse 3. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying get justice for me from my adversary. Next. And he would not for what? Please take note for he was She was asking for a while it looked like the judge was deaf. This is where most people stop asking about those things. You now start changing it to maybe it's not my destiny to be wise. Maybe it's not my destiny to break through in ministry. Maybe it's not my destiny to have children. You know, when you look for, for a while, for a while, for a while, no response. But afterward, he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, Yet, because this widow troubles me, I will what? Avenge her. Lest by her continual coming she weary me. Now, this is Jesus using a parable. Now, look at the next verse. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. Verse 8. Or verse, uh, verse, verse 7. 
And shall God not respond to his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he what? Uh -huh. It looks like I'm asking God for wisdom. And this kind of prayer is not prayer for sure. Prayer for things that matter to destiny, that we add value. It could be praying over your child. A child's destiny or a part of your destiny that you know from God's word. He says, shall he not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them. Look at verse 8. He bears long. I tell you that he will what? Can you see the paradox? He bears long. But by the time the answer starts, you will be running to catch up with God. It will not turn to speed. But many get weary. They abandon it. It's not my lot. It's not my destiny. No, you stay on it. By the time it begins to manifest in your life, <laughs> it will amaze you how it is people that will be telling you that this is already happening in your life. He said it will avenge them speedily. So one of the ways we obtain speed is through persistent prayers. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find what? So it's persistent prayer of faith. I believe that this scripture is mine. The way I say it is, this scripture must become flesh. These words must become my experience. I take it to God in prayers. Lord, this word must be fulfilled in my life. You said I'm a new covenant person. I am bought by the blood. I'm the seed of Abraham. This is my Lord. And then I stay on it. Thanking him. Proclaiming it. Reminding him. For a while it might look like heavens are closed. But heavens are not closed. Do you understand pastors? They told him. Lazarus is sick. Nigh unto death. You would have assumed that. Before he dies, let me quickly go and pray. He now stayed two more days. Is he wicked? No. Two more days. The distance from that place to Lazarus' place is another two, two days. So by that fourth day, the guy had died and was smelling. That was why Mary and Martha said, Ah, if you had been here, if you had been here, like you can only do it. You have rescued him from dying. Now that he's dead, we are finished. He said, no, now I am the resurrection and the life. If there's anything I missed in your life in April, I can do it in August. It will be greater glory in your life. He told them. There are many things. In fact, it will look like when you prayed about it, it was getting worse. But you stay on the word. Don't stay on what you are what you're observing. You stay on that word. God bends to the word. The word does not bend to anything. You stay on that verse. Let it be scripture based. This is how we shape our future with the word. There are scriptures I picked 20 years ago on prosperity, on destiny. I picked it. I, I can quote it in my sleep that I prayed. I'll be praying. I'll be praying. I'll be praying. I have for some time, maybe three years, two years. It appears like it's not there. I kept praying. Then suddenly, heavens open. He will avenge them speedily. One of the major keys to experiencing speed is persistent prayer of faith. You ask him for his right hand to rest on you. You release angels. You ask for favor. Another way... Speed will happen for many people this second half. As another way, another okay, say amen. amen. It's okay, your spirit is ready to receive tonight. Glory to God. Another way is through counsel, it's very technical. Proverbs 15 22. If you can hear me, say amen. amen. This, is, this is something people need to hear. You are one counsel away from a turnaround. And without counsel, plan goes what? Ori. But in the multitude of counselors, they are. There is something about your business 
that somebody needs to tell you this next week that, can, that, can, that by December you'll be thanking the person, but God used that person. Only that some of this counsel are in people we don't like. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Well, other pastors were castigating Jesus. All those Pharisees with their long robe, long beard, whatever it is. Nicodemus chose to go and talk to him in the night. How are you doing it now? Ask. I've shared this story severally. I'm sure you've had it, but I can't be tired of sharing it because it helped me when I was on campus. When uh, God told me about this, it taught me counsel on campus. There is not only hard work that makes people succeed. There are many energetic people that, that fail or don't reach their full potential because they are working with their own limited effort. He said, I was in part one. He said, go to people in the next level. Ask them how they succeeded. When you get to part two or second year or sophomore, whatever you call it, ask those in the next year. So there was a class that almost everybody failed. I remember, I was even scared. I, I can almost, they almost, almost your class fail. So I went to talk to them and they said, mm, the problem was just attending. So attending the man's lecture, just attending. That should not play with his attendance. So, and I was a pastor on campus. His lecture is Fridays by 4 p.m. Mm. That's why people travel. They will leave by 2 p.m. I will get your notes. So one day we were in class. He, took, he saw the class was scanty. Any lecturer would be angry anyway. He took the attendance. Five marks, you know. After the end, at the end of the semester, there was no time paper, no test. He didn't have time. He used to travel. He just multiplied the five by eight. Straight. Five times eight is what? Mm, five times zero is what? Or oh, zero times zero. <laughs> I had 36 in the exam. 36 plus 40 is what? That's how I got an A. Just counsel. Pride hinders people from success. I know what I'm doing. I've tried everything. If you have tried everything, it should be working. You've not tried the right thing. If you keep giving excuses for failure, you are not ready for success. I'm begging you. Counsel, ask, ask. We had people in my class that day or that time that had 37 over, over 16 exam. 37, some 38. But they traveled. 38 plus... Uh, say it now. What is it? Uh, that is what? I don't know what it is now, but that time it was what? F. Somebody had A, not because he read more, but somebody told him, this is how you handle your wife. Oh. This is how you talk to your husband. Oh. If you want to stay long in marriage, no, I don't care. No, 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 I don't care. Women are just like that. If you don't treat them this way, the marriage might end because you won't hear. This is how they handle this kind of business. When you have this kind of thing, go and report this, submit this document. Eh, no, no, no. I don't waste my time doing those things. <laughs> the government that doesn't know Joseph comes in, you will know those things. Ask. I remember that time they were begging that lecturer to add just two marks. Two. Just to have an E. I remember. Those with 37, three marks. They were sending lecturers to him. Please, sir. At least the ones that had all those 36, 37, 38. Just, he said, no. 38 is 38. He's a Christian lecturer. He, he, he belongs to a denomination that is very deep. <laughs> I won't say more than that. I remember him. He's a solid Christian. In a denomination, they are very deep in that denomination. So he said 37 is 37. <laughs> so you don't realize that they had to carry over the course. So the next semester or next session, they now sit by force. You will not carry over into the second half. The things that hindered you the first half, you will not carry to the second half. Oh, Nini Oriki Kun, in the name of Jesus. Interpreter, help me. You, people carry over problems. 
They were telling you in February, don't do this. Uh, do it like this. You, you keep explaining. And you are still doing it now. May your year end better than it started in the name of Jesus. I pray from my heart that you will not carry problems from first half into the second half. Rather, this second half will be shame on Satan in your life. It will be shame on Satan in your life and ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is the dog that will not uh, that wants to perish that does not hear the whistle of the hunter. You understand that? Never pass the stage to be counseled. Never think you are wiser than scriptures. Education can be your hindrance. Any knowledge that poses against the knowledge of God is dangerous to you. If God that created the heavens and the earth is like a manual, says this is how it works. And another body of knowledge says this is what maybe traditional thinking, village thinking, friends that, you know, say something. And it's contrary to what that creator says. And you follow that, you are cutting problems. You will still go back to that. You will still go back to that. They had to receive that class. You, you want to pass and graduate? You have to now go back there and now sit every Friday. And sometimes you now do it for a whole semester and they will not take attendance. I'll be looking for. If I want to tell him, take attendance. I'm here. <laughs> you know, no, no, a student. You be asking, won't you take attendance today? I said, no, no, next week, Friday. Ah. I should have traveled today. Now, if I know that this man will not take attendance, I would have traveled. Next week, again, you came. Ah. Take attendance today now. You will not carry over. <laughs> Finally, another major key to speed is sacrificial giving. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 10. believe Anna had been praying Lord only you can do this now what happened see my other woman she's mocking me look at this but she got on a principle kingdom and it's kingdom principle is this not really about money it's kingdom it's kingdom it's kingdom it's kingdom I don't know how she got into it maybe Eli was preaching in the temple and she just got it and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Verse 11. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and do not forget your maidservant, but we give your maidservant what? What will I do? I will give him to the Lord all the days. And then it looked like God that was deaf. He said, hmm? You don't have any child. And the one you're asking me for, you will drop him in. No, it's not like church where you take transport from one location to the other. The temple is, you travel. So when you drop that child, you'll be, you be living alone. Now you don't have a child. And the one you're asking me for, you will drop it in the temple all the days of his life. That's a sacrifice. When you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb and you have one child, you see how you camp around the child. You love the child. Now you're not saying, I will leave him in the temple. That's a sacrifice. Then God said, ah, something don't happen. You know why? Eli's children were misbehaving. The sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, they had bastardized uh, the priesthood. There was vacancy in the temple. So perhaps I was a meeting in heaven and they were asking for, hey, we need another human being. <laughs> and then you are now saying, okay, if you give me a male child, I will throw him to the temple. She just hit the kingdom need and her womb opened wide. Beyond Samuel, she had five or six other children. I think that is speed for someone that was barren. Are you understanding me? Kingdom, I want you to be driven by the kingdom. When there is a kingdom need and the Holy Spirit stirs you up, 
you dive into it sometimes sacrificially it will shake you but you you will never can you imagine two books first Samuel second Samuel to that son and then God gave extra five that sacrificial giving because what if after dropping Samuel you don't have another child again you'll not be visiting him once in a year when you now go and visit him you will now be crying with him or you almost steal himself so let's go Jerry I didn't know it was going to be like this <laughs> oh yes after five years Samuel mommy I don't want to stay me too I don't want you to stay when I was promising God I didn't know it's going to be like this where's your where's Eli he went to the farm let's go let's go let's go let's go you just, just go. it's a sacrifice something happened <laughs> um, we were I was doing some survey at the good land for the church as a leader just to check how other things were fine so I was passing the junior church believe me the junior church is not really the focus for the charge, you know. Yeah, children are going to come in the evenings, but they are still in school during the day. So that was not my focus. As I was passing, the Holy Spirit said, you have to enter. Enter. Oh, so I entered. As I entered, and I saw some things. Ah, this is not okay. Ah, I didn't know it was like this. We should have changed this. How much is this one? Ah, two million, one million. This one, ah. And then we are spending money on recharge. That shouldn't be the focus now because you have to do it from the money. That money, you know the money is using. So I told them, well, yeah, just change all these things. Put on my account. I was just send, I was sending money to them almost every day. 1.5 million, 500,000, every day. What was it, Joy? Um, I think it was the second day of the charge. I was standing here. Somebody just came and said, ah, Pastor, um, um, I can, can, wanted to see me, and myself, and my, and my wife. I said, What happened? He said, um, God said we should give you a vehicle. <laughs> I said, I said, What kind of vehicle? He said, BMW. Hmm? He said, Or if you want us to sell it and give it to you. I said, well, I, t- I don't know. I, Anyone, but so anyone I prefer. And I, but I said, okay, sir, it depends on the amount. So I said, like, how much is the? He said between twenty-five and thirty million. I said, <laughs> you will sell it very well. You have to sell it. I release the angel that will bring the buyer. Jesus died, but he resurrected. Sacrificial giving is one major key to breaking loose. Don't always do it only the time they do it in the church where you attend. Anytime there's a, you can even be in your local assembly and you notice something and the Holy Ghost prompts you, you go and change these toilet seats of that church. And they say, go and do it without making noise. When God shows up, you will cry. It will be tears of joy. It works. It works. He said, he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seeds, shall... D- do, believe me. Believe me. I mean, I know they're going to sell the vehicle. When it was even mentioned, it's enough joy for me. That, oh, God, you are, you are thinking about me. I, 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 thanking him already. Ah, you are much more than my account. I mean, like, maybe I thought it was a BM was a 1987 model. You know, you now sell it. They say 277,000. You know, so that's how I had to ask. Because somebody gave us a car many years ago. Many, many years ago. BM uh, Benz 190. I didn't know that it was giving the family problem. I didn't know, so they now gave me. As I was, and I prayed for them, which is fine. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the car was driving us. I'll be at the, <laughs> There's no spare part. You'll be at Yanok Paja. There was no last man, no. Yanok Paja with the baby in the car. Car will break down. I said, is this only a seat? <laughs> Rise up on your feet, people of God. <laughs> ah! 
I don't know. Maybe in case God was also talking to you before. To do something for your pastor. And maybe this testimony should encourage you. <laughs> That's a joke. This is how we live. Ask her. She sometimes thinks I'm crazy. Our kids are, we spend a lot on school fees. Salary can carry it. But the blessing can carry it. I said the blessing carries it with leftover. Salary can carry it. It's the blessing that makes it rich. And I did no sorrow with it. Lift your hands and just surrender to God. Just surrender. The sacrifice starts with you first. I surrender myself to you this second half. Use me for your praise. Use me for your glory. If he has you, then your money, your anything is, 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 is easy. But does he have you? I surrender. Oh, to Jesus. I surrender. Oh, to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust you in his presence day. Surrender all, all, all of me. I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I Father, we thank you for speed. We will mount up with wings as the eagle the second half of this year. Our businesses will not be slow. Destiny will not be slow. We will run by the hand of the Holy Spirit. It will be so amazing that it will draw others to serve you in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, we, we, the counsel that we need, just one information on that business or ministry or life or marriage that, that, that will turn sorrow into joy. Father, let us locate it in the name of Jesus Christ. The plunge our lives into whatever demand you are making from us. You, I, we know you will never let us alone. You will always reward. We only receive grace to do your bidding in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, see what you did with Anna. A woman that was in mockery. And we don't know how, but she offered you one male child. She had not even seen the child. She sacrificed him for you. And then you blessed and blasted the barrenness away. And now she had like six children. You can do it again. In business, in career, in destinies. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Someone shouted, Amen. Please put your hands together for the Lord.